All right, here in the garage, getting this gearbox repaired that uh, blew up on me when I didn't have any fluid in it. So I've already disassembled it all, found out what was wrong, ordered the new parts, and those have come in here. And I'll just show you real quick how it came apart, and then I'll get going back together. Uh, this is the input shaft. It was all still good. I just got everything cleaned up on it. And that just mounted right here with these bolts and a gasket of a certain thickness. On the bottom side is where the output shaft is. Um, this was bolted on here like that, that flange. And this gear ran up through it like that. And that splined in the nut is where the uh, blades connected to. So you can see on here there's a, a milled area up top here by my pinky and another area here. So it had one, two bearings and a spacer collar in between. And the bottom bearing, the one closest to the output shaft, was the one that was uh, really bad. This was the upper bearing. Um, it was in okay shape, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace it as well, just cause it was down uh, near the damaged area and might've had a lot of loading on it, maybe had some damage. So I've got two new bearings for the output shaft, a new, seal for the output shaft a new uh, retaining ring right here for this top bearing because the old one got kind of bent up when i pressed this bearing off and that's pretty much all the parts i got i think i'm gonna be able to reuse these gaskets here um, they're partly gaskets but they're also you can buy these shims in different thicknesses to help set the correct gear mesh here so i believe that's all due to how this was cast and how it was machined how they decide what thickness shims they want so i'm going to go ahead and just reuse the same thickness here so i'm going to start assembling this and uh, get it on the press and get it all back together just walking through what i'm doing here is i'm pushing the shaft through the bearing that's the upper bearing then this is the retaining ring that goes just beneath the top bearing on the output shaft it's pretty difficult to get on there and there is pushing the lower bearing onto the shaft then pushing the output shaft into the housing. Then there's the uh, seal for the output shaft. Put a little sealant on that, or RTV, and got that bolted down. Okay, so we got the output shaft in. Spins real nice and free. So next, the input shaft just goes right into here, and the big gear there will mesh with this gear, and you get some bolts here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Spread a little bit of grease on the gears here just to get them started. And this thing will be back together. Now the other bearings, you know, they were all like this. They were open. You could see all the ball bearings in there. But the new ones that came, they're sealed. So I don't know uh, what the difference is there, but that was the replacement part. And somebody also recommended, you know, just to go ahead and replace this box. So when I originally blew this thing up, I was just going to go ahead and buy a whole new box. I found it for $218 shipped with tax. Well, then after I did that, I started looking into rebuilding this one. And I was able to get the bearings and seals and all the parts I needed here for like 60 bucks shipped. 65 bucks, I think it was, shipped. Um, so I went ahead and I canceled the box I ordered and just got these replacement parts. Now, somebody else mentioned after I had already done that, that it would be better to just buy the 50 horsepower box. So this is an Omni RC30, and apparently there's an Omni RC50, and the difference is, is it's a stronger box, and the thing that makes it stronger is those two bearings I just replaced, instead of just being, you know, normal ball bearings like this, that take a lot of side load, um, from the you know spinning cutter they're actually tapered roller bearings like you would see in the hub of a vehicle so the bearing is actually tapered and instead of balls it has a bunch of rollers around the whole circumference of the bearing and you put one in that's tapered this way and one that's tapered this way and then as you torque that down they tighten together and um, really helps control a lot of movement so that might have been a good idea but at this point, I already had the parts ordered, and I was kind of moving in this direction. So, if something happens again, that'll probably be my uh, way to go. But really, I don't think this would have failed. 
if it had gear oil in it. So I don't really know if I have a big need for that other uh, gearbox, but if you have a larger machine, you know, that may be a good option. You know, my machine runs 30 horsepower, so not too much. Well, apparently the bottom bolts aren't supposed to get lock washers because I've only got six lock washers. I used four on the bottom here, but I just got a few more uh, to go ahead and put lock washers both up top and below. Figured that can't hurt. Feels pretty good. I'm sure there's some sort of torque spec there. I don't know what it is. So the next task is get these blades sharpened up. They're not too bad. There's some nicks in them though I'm going to knock out. Got my super sturdy workbench here. Alright, so we got this back in the garage here. And basically you have to have the bush hog motor mounted first and then this will slide into the coupler. spinning and I put a big wrench on there and give it a crank. I'm gonna have to bend my cotter pin a little bit here because there's a lip that protects this shank and I can't get the pan in. All right, here's the cotter pin in all installed. 
So it was just hard to get in because this lip right here is in front of the where the hole of the cotter pin was. So I had to bend the pin and then straighten it back out and get it through, then get the edges curved around there. So it's looking nice. Unfortunately, I didn't really film any ending to this video here. I uh, just kind of have about 25 or 30 more minutes of brush cutting footage here, which I know gets boring. So I just wanted to say that the brush cutter has been working very well. I've used it probably 8 or 10 hours or so after the repair has been done, and uh, it's been working great. I would say that that gearbox is easy to dis disassemble if you have a press makes it a lot easier um, so if you do mess up your box don't be too afraid to uh, dig into it and repair it for quite a bit cheaper than you can buy a new one so I appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions leave them in the comments and I'll make sure to get to them thanks